Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Spin Cycle, the show for short reviews of albums new and old. And today I'm going to be talking about a little German band called Heaven Shall Burn and their new album Wanderer, which was released on September 19th of this year. So, Heaven Shall Burn hail from Saalfeld, Germany. They were founded in 1996 by guitarists Mike Wiekert and drummer Matthias Voigt. They then added Marcus Bischoff as their vocalist and bassist Eric Bischoff in 1997 to complete out the band at that time. They can best be described as deathcore with melodic death metal themes and some metalcore themes in there as well. I first heard them with their album Antigone and I was immediately hooked on this band. You can almost call it catharsis music because it's just so aggressive and it's just purifying in a way. They are extremely aggressive but they do have a poignant message and certainly a conscientious band compared to you know a lot of bands where they're more storytellers. These guys are certainly out there with a message. They're vegan, they're anti-war, they're anti-racism, a lot of social justice ideals which actually draws me more to their music. As a band they've carved out their signature sound with little variation um, until Invictus came out they didn't really have a ton of variation, but Invictus included the song Given in Death, which was a duet with singer Sabine Wegener. And it was a truly unique song that was incredibly effective to have these like death metal vocals plus you know, clean vocal female singing in this duet. It was an incredibly effective song. And for me, it completely changed the appearance of the band. From what it seems, it also changed their direction a little bit since their next album, Vito, sounded much different than some of their other stuff. Wanderer is their eighth studio album, and is recorded following the extensive touring in support of 2013's Veto. The album includes a cover of Sodom's Agent Orange, which is a fantastic song by the way, which follows actually their tradition of including a cover on the album. Most of their albums include at least one cover in the album itself, not just as a, an additional song. But the deluxe edition also has a My Dying Bride cover. And this is also the first album without Voigt on the drums who left the band in 2013. As an album, Wanderer continues to show the growth and impact of Heaven Shall Burn. Some of the songs are more expertly melodic death metal than we've heard before. They've certainly reined in their more brutal assault that they've had on past albums. And you know what you're getting, but they certainly add more surprises. There's a lot of aspects of this album that I didn't see coming and they're welcome surprises. It also strengthens their band with the dynamic sounds by being more melodic death metal than they have in the past where they've been more deathcore. It gives more, it makes their sound much more dynamic. The solos have great definition and there is fantastic melody throughout. So this is a much more cohesive album than I would say Vito or even Invictus before it. And it's certainly different than what you've got on say Iconoclast, but it's a welcome change and certainly a maturity in their direction that they want to take their band. My top four songs off of the album would be Downshifter, which was the first single that they released, which is definitely a fast, energetic song. Pray to God, not pray, but like <sighs> pray to God. That's a fun, that's a really fun song. A River of Crimson. If it's not the deluxe edition, this is the last song on the album and it's a great outro for the album. It's you know aggressive, but it's also brooding and dark and wonderfully melodic. And They Shall Not Pass is one of the most crushing and energetic songs on the album and it just it hits you like a freight train it's awesome my favorite song though has to be bring the war home which even though it's probably the most singly song on the album the message in this song is so poignant and it reminds me so much of why i love metal this song alone just brings it all together and brings forth the message that this band wants to send. Heaven Shall Burn has been a consistent force in metal, but they haven't really settled for ordinary. Wanderer might be their best album since Iconoclast Part 1, and it certainly builds on the dynamic sound that they developed in Vito. But they haven't sacrificed their core identity even as they continue to grow musically. I think this is an absolutely welcome addition to the Heaven Shall Burn catalog. My top five for the week, I love a good interlude. So albums that have great interludes, Heaven Shall Burn is certainly one of them. So number one, off of Antigone, Rasande Vaughn, it's a good, short, very slow, melodic interlude. Arch Enemy, off of Rise of the Tyrant, Intermezzo Liberté, that's a great, great guitar solo interlude. Opeth, 
Patterns in the Ivy off of Blackwater Park. This one is one of those that just reminds you of why Opeth is such a great band. In Flames, Paller Anders Visa off of Colony. Just an awesome, great, like, dark interlude. And then one of my absolute favorites from probably the masters of interludes, Insomnium, Decoherence off of One for Sorrow. And this one is a great, like, guitar, piano, just powerful interlude. Let me know what you think of Heaven Shall Burn's new album, Wanderer, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, what your thoughts are. I know there's other Heaven Shall Burn fans out there. I know you're out there. So let me know what you think of the new album. Thanks a lot for watching this episode of Spin Cycle, and I'll see you guys in two weeks. Bye-bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, you can click over here to subscribe to my channel. Or you can check out my website over here at dkessner.com where you can find out more about everything I do, including the books I've written, like Elliot Knoll and so many others. So thanks a lot for watching.